Hey guys, this is Danny Boy. This is part three of my Demon Hunter series showcasing uh, gameplay in the new runes for Beta Patch 13, which came out a few days ago. Um, so just a continuation of the same old, same old. I just recently got Piercing Arrow. Um, I just got Impact, which is the rune that allows your... Uh, impale to stun. Unfortunately, as you see, I am shooting and nothing is happening. This is, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, where the servers restarted and my game uh, had a massive lag spike um, that I could not recover from. So, wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. And here we go. So, back to the entrance again. It rolled me back slightly, so I'm level 6 again. I'll be digging level 7 in just a bit. Um, yeah, unfortunate, uh, I didn't bother editing it out because, I mean, it was all of 20 seconds, and here we go, back to where we were. Um, so, I'm gonna be switching to impact now and trying, yeah, I thought it was actually something interesting, like bowler shot, but no, it's something lame, like impale. I'll be switching to impale and trying it out, it just makes it stun, it's really nothing exciting. Um, which is unfortunate. But, what can you do? Work with what you're given. Oh, and as you also saw, tutorials are st uh, turned back on, my key bindings are screwed up. Um, because it crashed, and whenever it crashes, uh, and you have to ex exit out of the game, uh, it resets everything. I assume it might not if I had actually successfully exited the game before that happened, but every time I don't actually do so, because I was trying to do this all in one massive session. Uh, so, it's unfortunate and it uh, makes me do stupid things because I'm not, I'm used to my keybinds and I don't have them anymore and I don't bother resetting them. I might actually on this guy reset them, but later on it happens again and I definitely stop at that point. Uh, that was, uh, Impale with the Impact Rune as you just saw, the, uh, Skeleton Summoner guy was stunned for a brief period of time. Not too useful, really unnecessary. I did use it on the Skeleton King for a little bit, and it's okay on him, but he's not really a threat, so it just makes him die that much easier. Here we're picking up the Templar again, as you have seen when I played the Witch Doctor. Oh, I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, actually, no, I will talk about that uh, next, next video. Tell me. So this is part three. I will finish the playthrough in this part. I will be killing the Skeleton King again in this video for the second time. Uh, that you've seen at least. I will make a part four just showing strafe, I guess, and maybe another ability. Something short. I might actually even put it in... This video, if I have enough time left at the end of it, I'm not sure right now how long those clips actually are. So, we shall see. This might only be a three-parter, which would be awesome, because that means it'll take much less time to render, and much less time to update, uh, upload to YouTube, and I'll be able to get videos out even faster. So, moving along. Not much happening. What can I talk about? This is, again, off-topic, but I do like talking to you guys about other games. Um, I recently read up a bit more. I am a fan of the Borderlands series, personally. And by series, I mean the one game that's in you know, the series so far. I'm definitely looking forward to Borderlands 2. I just read up a bit on the one of the new classes, um, and I've been following the game, and I know a, a good deal about it, but I hadn't seen that they released some detailed information about the or people had, at least, that have demoed the game uh, at game uh, cons, had really some detailed information about the uh, abilities for the Gunzerker class. Oh, and to get on topic of this particular game, I often make mistakes with that set piece with this area, uh, because usually it doesn't lead anywhere, but when you're going with a Templar and you're moving on, that set piece, I think always, if you get it, will lead to this guy. It's incredibly... Easy boss, Jondar the Necromancer. I mean, and shoot him two more times, and he's gone. 
Compare how quickly I killed him on this character to how quickly I killed him on my Witch Doctor. I believe at this point in time, each both characters had the same quality weapon. They each were using a level 6 or so weapon. Uh, Witch Doctors are probably a little weaker. Uh, significantly weaker, because I think I bought his. I didn't craft it. But still, uh, this guy killed him way faster. Piercing Arrow is really powerful. It probably does more weapon damage than a lot of my Witch Doctor stuff, too. Uh, but anyway, so I was looking at the Gunzerker and seeing some of the stuff he got, and the Gunzerker, if you've played Borderlands 1, is kind of uh, like a combination of the Berserker and kind of of Mordecai in terms of that he's a, a big DPS character. Uh, he gets a dual wield ability uh, and a bunch of abilities that make the dual wield last longer. Uh, and he got some, from what I saw, there were some pretty interesting mechanics that I haven't really ever seen before in other games. Like, for example, one thing was the last shot in every clip does massive damage. And I, I don't know if it said the shot, the shell explodes, or if it was just massive damage, but I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and just the ability to have your dual wield last longer periods of time and, and different things. The game is definitely looking very interesting so far. Um, another thing was just when you're dual wielding, you can throw out two grenades at once, which is really cool. You got something, I think, called the Come At Me Bro, uh, which is essentially a, a taunt that also super uh, charges his defensive abilities. I think it uh, improves his damage reduction or his shields or his health or all three, something like that, which is neat. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned Borderlands 1, I think, in a Swotor commentary. And the game definitely had a huge uh, room to improve, but I definitely enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, you know, essentially, uh, Diablo, a loot-based first-person shooter with RPG elements, it was definitely enjoyable for me. I I'm really looking forward to Borderlands 2. And I, from the changes I've seen, it looks like they're doing a phenomenal job of improving upon the game in the areas that it suffered. For example, just making, you know, comparing dual wield to some of the abilities that you got in Borderlands 2. Dual wield is a phenomenal ability and something that you can base a character around. Compare that to, you know, Brick, who got Berserk, which was you just punch people in the face, which is cool for a while, but the novelty does wear off. You know, and it's not something that you can really build around. I mean, you can, but it's very inefficient and not very effective when you reach playthrough 2.5, which is the game at its hardest. You know, comparing dual wheel to that, it's just, it's way more fun, way cooler, and something that you can use. It's always viable, just being able to use two uh, assault rifles, or two pistols, or two rocket launchers, or two, uh, my hope, two grenade launchers. I'm really hoping they're going to add grenade launchers to the game. Something that was going to be in Borderlands 1, but they, it didn't quite make it. It's going to be an extension of rocket launchers. Um, but going back to the game itself, you know, of all the areas you can die in... Uh, the beta, this is one of the more dangerous ones just because of the archers can really rip you to shreds. Archers are one of the few enemies that can do significant damage to you. I think the only time I died on my Barbarian was actually in this area. I died once or twice on him. And I eventually just, I was dodging the archers forever and finally I just thought, you know what, I'm going to just commit try to kill them. And I killed some of them but they took me down before I can get them, but whatever. I play all my melee characters naked, I, I'm playing this guy naked, as you can see, barring the weapon. I wouldn't be using the weapon either, except, you know, obviously the attacks require a bow of some kind, and also, I mean, again, the kill speed is ridiculously slow without it, so I just use the level 6 weapons on all my characters. Witch Doctor's using something a little weaker, though I might have upgraded it at some point. I would have played him naked too, except that I was trying out the new auto-equip feature, and just toggled it on for the hell of it. Um, but... We're going to be facing the orc again. I hope I stick to Impale and Guided Arrow with Piercing Rune on it just because of how effective it is, and I just want to show you how quickly he will die. I don't recall. I think I did, but we'll see. And the final sequence yet again. My millionth time doing this. After this, I will show... Whatever other abilities I unlocked I thought were interesting, I think Strafe is the only one that really comes to mind. Maybe there was something else. Um, come on, let's just get this over with. So fun! Yay! Yeah, I really... I just don't think, you know, the Skeleton King stacks up to Endarial. Or Duriel, you know. Or Mephisto. Any of them. 
It's just so easy. I hope he gets to be way harder and get some new mechanics on Inferno. For one thing, the skeletons that he summons should be a threat, and they should not drop health blows on Inferno. Another thing, he shouldn't telegraph what he's going to do so visibly. Yeah, see, there's the stun. Have him down to close to half-life already, just crit. Dropping caltrips as I go. This is by far one of the easiest kills I had on him. Pew, pew, pew. Staggering those impales. You can get so few impales out, though, anyway. There's no reason to ever attack the skeletons. He'll kill them, honestly, if you just leave them alone. He'll kill them with his huge-ass mace. They do almost no damage, and there we go. Mindlessly easy. I think the only thing that's easier than that is the wizard, though honestly that was probably easier than the wizard. I just picked up Volatile Explosions, which is a nice improvement to Bola. I will be demonstrating that in a second, so just hang on guys and you will see that. Okay guys, so this is basically just a little montage of Bola shot ruined with Volatile Explosives and Evasive Fire. Evasive Fire, you just do a backflip when enemies get near you, and you shoot out a bullet-like projectile that hits instantly, doesn't have a travel time. Uh, I have to say, Improved Bola shot is pretty I mean, it's good, it's cool. Big explosive radius, it leaves a nice uh, decal in the ground, a nice crater. Um, definitely fun. Fun ability. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like outside on the ground decal. Then we'll skip over, here we go, to an indoor battle. As you can see though, I'm again, I'm using two builders, rather than two uh, hatred builders, rather than any hatred spenders, because I just don't see the point. These abilities are way more effective than any of the hatred spenders I have. And I, I know I'm starting to sound pretty redundant, I keep saying the same thing, but I just can't stress enough that that's really a flaw in the system if that persists. I'm hoping that this changes dramatically as time goes on, but considering how good even some of the game's earliest focus builders are, I, I just don't know. I, I really think that this is a system that could use a bit of a revamp. Um, but, again, I haven't seen everything, so only time will tell, but I have yet to get any... Any of the three or so spenders I've gotten, none of them have seemed good enough to actually use. But we'll see. Uh, in a bit, I'll also be showing you Strafe, the final spender I believe that you get in the beta. Um, which I was, again, not too happy about. But I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, fortunately, this is going to be the last video of the Demon Hunter series. I did not have to run through the game. This is actually, you know, the second playthrough, but I didn't have to actually complete it to see all that I wanted to see. Unlike on some characters, like the Wizard, which I had to level 12, which I had to run through the game like three times in order to do so. Very unfortunate experience. I have no desire to do it again. Um, but I don't regret it. I did want to see the... I, I was pleased with what I got to see uh, by doing so. So... Uh, probably not the best use to buy time, but whatever, what can you do? So, here we go, we're finishing up this little part of the series. As you can see, I mean, Bola Shot is really effective when you just stagger it on a few people. Massive explosions, massive damage. This is an example of me getting a little lost, trying to find the way down. It definitely does happen, even if you know the set pieces fairly well. And normally I would edit that out, but we will be moving on to an entirely different area very shortly, so it really doesn't matter. And here you go, a little bit more of the pew-pew explosions. So I'm pleased to see how Bola shot improves with time. So now we're going to get to see a little bit of strafe gameplay. And it's essentially just a bullet whirlwind. You just spin around and you shoot everything. Which is fine. I mean, I expected it more to be like Diablo 2 strafe, only you'd be able to move. That's just kind of what I thought uh, saw from the description. And I feel like they actually demonstrated the ability a long time ago. I just forgot about it. So, uh... I shouldn't be disappointed, but I definitely am. Uh, and that's really all it is. As you can see, it drains hatred very quickly where you have to use your builder again anyway. And in the time it drains hatred to zero, it really doesn't kill everything on the screen. So, it, uh, yeah, I really didn't have much more gameplay than that. But from what I could gather and what I could see, it's just really not that effective, even with, even with good weapons. Because, I mean, I switched to my level 9 crossbows, I think. Uh, hand crossbows. Well, I thought it'd be cool to see uh, what would happen if I used it in the middle of a bunch of gravestones to just see the physics at work. So here's a little demonstration of that. And I wasn't disappointed. It is pretty cool to watch all those gravestones pop. 
and see some of the collateral damage. Alright guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned for some Monk gameplay, and have a good one.